Hello everyone, today we're talking about the best scarecrow, in my opinion at least, in DC history. In terms of from television and movies, specifically movies. Anyways, um, so the scarecrow I'm specifically talking about is the scarecrow from the Nolan trilogy. The one played by Killian Murphy, and if you don't know who Killian Murphy is, he is, he went on to play Oppenheimer. Yeah. So, anyways, um, let's talk about this and why he is so awesome. So, uh, when we think of the Scarecrow, let's go back to basics. When we think of the Scarecrow, we think of this guy. We think of him as, um, like, he is a, he's what some people wouldn't would look down on but he's intelligent and he acts in the shadows yet when he does something he expects it to be brought into the light he is that kind of character he plots in the darkness but oh, when his plan comes to fruition he he wants to be there he wants to set everything up he wants to be there he wants to be that guy but also he doesn't really want to be that guy he wants to be his own guy and when his plans come to fruition, he just lets it all tumble. He just lets it go, so to say. Anyways, so yeah. So when you think of that type of scarecrow, the one I described, um, what do you think of? Do you think of the more animated versions, like the ones from Batman the Animated Series? One that is where he is a... um. What can I say? One where he is more or less just a goon for other criminals and like a side character that kind of just like cackles and is like just played for jokes in in a in Batman the Animated Series. Batman the Animated Series is good at many things, but in terms of the joke and but in terms of the scarecrow, I think not. Most animated um scarecrows actually get this character in my opinion at least, wrong, based off of what we've seen from the comics. They play him as this cackling, literal side character, pretty much. Anyways, um, apart from this, now we turn to the ones that we've seen in live action. Specifically, the, the two that you, that you can probably think of right off the top of your head are... Are obviously the Nolan trilogy scarecrow, the one we are talking about today, or you can think of the one from the Gotham TV series. Now, the Gotham TV series takes an interesting take on the scarecrow. I think it was based off of the version of scarecrow from the Arkham games, but I'm not too sure. This type of scarecrow is really has the same, runs into the same problem that the other Scarecrows do. He is literally a side character that is played just to be there, just for the plot. Say, for every big plot, whether it be the Joker or um, the Riddlers, um, Scarecrow is just there. He's just there. But no, this is where the Dark Knight's trilogy's um, Scarecrow runs in and takes the number one spot what he does is he when he's introduced first thing he does is he goes in he asserts his character he asserts himself as the scarecrow we see him doing this and and we, we're immediately introduced to him and he's using this fear toxin but at the same time he likes his work, and we don't know what he's up to. It gives us something to wonder about until we exactly figure out, you know, what he's about. This leads in to an entire thing of us figuring out what he's about. And, oh, that scarecrow mask is just a beauty. Honestly, I love that scarecrow mask. It's just a... Mwah. Anyways, um... And we see he made this himself. He clearly studied this himself in his free time whenever he was doing something. And the thing, people look down on him, but he's like, but he's cocky. Like he knows 
that it, these people look down on me today, but tomorrow, ah, they're going to be my bitch, you know, um, things like that. Um, and he uses it, his mask, in such a way he's like, I'm going to get stuff done, but I'm also going to have a little bit of fun with this, too. So, you know, he makes, like, little remarks when, he's, when he lights Batman on fire and stuff like that. You know, you know, a villain doesn't get to set Batman on fire every day. I mean, even the Joker didn't do that. And I think the Joker would have loved to do that. <laughs> Anyways, also, now that we've talked about the character in general, I want to speak of how he is used later. How he is drastically underused in this franchise going forward. Specifically in The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Like He is criminally underused in these movies. And he is pushed to the side and um, at the end of Batman Begins. Honestly, I'd love him to be the main villain instead. But anyways, um, that just goes to show how in Batman Begins, how my point of him, he just sits to the side when his he knows his plan's going to work out. And then he lets it go. He literally says, you know, there's nothing you can do to stop me now. Ha! But in... And he's like, he, he, he knows what's going to happen before it happens. He's in control. And he's, he's crazy. It, it's cool. But now, let's talk about his the crime that no one committed while making these Dark Knight films. This crime I'm talking about is underusing the Scarecrow in a massive way. Let's say, in the Dark Knight, he is seen just to show, just to pretty much make a joke. The, I don't wear hockey pants joke. He's pretty much just used for that. Um, so he's underused there, and he only has, like, maybe four, maybe three, he only has maybe a couple minutes of screen time in that movie, um, and Dark Knight Rises, I mean, he's a judge, which returns him to his roots, but I feel like he could have done more, it, 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 I feel like, anyways, I feel like they just get him right in Batman Begins and kind of just let it go after that. Yeah, guys, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Please like, subscribe, and ding that bell. Never see my video. What's all for my bell?